Investigating Neural Networks Through Microfluidics In our brains, neurons form intricate networks that allow electrical signals to flow in an efficient and directional manner between brain regions, ensuring that information ends up in the right destination. Neuroscientists have struggled to reproduce these intricate one-way patterns of electrical exchange in traditional cell cultures. Jana Sandvig, Axel Sandvig, Nikolai winter Hjem, and Katrina Hunsen show how the directional flow of information can be successfully mimicked using microfluidic platforms developed at NTNU Nanolab, which feature microscopic networks of channels and chambers. On the team's platform, two groups of neurons, each containing a few thousand cells, are placed in separate chambers. These chambers are connected by a network of tunnels just a few micrometers in width. To connect with other cells, neurons can grow thin branching structures called neurites, which convey the electrical signals produced by the main body of the cell. Taking advantage of this, the Sandvig team uses thin microfluidic channels that are wide enough to allow these neurites to grow through, but too small to let the main bodies of the neurons in. Within this setup, the two neuronal groups can talk to each other from separate chambers through their branching neurites. By implementing specific shapes within the microchannels, the researchers could engineer a directional flow of information between the two groups of neurons. The Sandvig team now anticipates that their microfluidic platform could help researchers gain deeper insights into how the brain functions. The platform could even be used to explore potential new treatments for neurological diseases. As an example of this, the team has taken their technology one step further by connecting four distinct populations of neurons in a microfluidic platform. In these chambers, the team has grown networks from different brain regions affected during the early stages of Alzheimer's disease. How does your platform generate a one-way flow of information between the two groups of neurons? So, specifically, we have introduced loops within the microchannels. So these loops will guide the neurites coming from the blue cell population back to the chamber from which they originated. The neurites coming from the purple cell population will on the other hand be guided all the way through the channels to connect with the blue cells. So in this way the purple cells can send signals to the blue cells but not the other way around. How do you monitor the signals produced by the neurons? To monitor the signals from the neurons, we embed small micrometer-sized electrodes in the surface on which the neurons grow. When a neuron sends electrical signals to each other, these electrodes will then be able to detect the electrical signals and send them to a computer. We can then use this data to study how the neurons communicate with each other. So, we have furthermore developed highly porous electrodes on the nanometer scale that are better at separating electrical signals coming from the neurons from noise in the environment than the electrodes most commonly used by neuroscientists today. How could the platform be used to study neurological diseases and potential treatments? As the neural networks are separated into different chambers, this gives us the opportunity to induce a disease such as Alzheimer's in the first chamber and study how the disease impacts the healthy networks in the connecting chambers. For example, this gives us the opportunity to study at what time points the disease networks start to affect the propagation of electrical signals between the chambers. And as such, we can identify optimal time points for treatment and see if we can try to stop the disease development before it spreads to the healthy networks. Thank you.